So yeah, here's here's the watch box again. Collections within my collection, as you can see, I have uh, two Orients, three Seikos, two Alphas. If you look at divers, I have one, two, three, four divers. So the first watch is my oldest watch. This is a Citizen Quartz. Uh, you know, plated gold color, circa 1992, I would say. My mom bought this for me when I was, uh, maybe 93, when I was a senior in high school. Very, very 90s, coming out of the 80s when, uh, you know, gold was the cool, cool thing. You know, I got so sick of seeing gold that, you know, I think that's where there was a backlash of gold look in the 2000s. Everybody just wanted to steal. It still works. I need to get a battery in it. Um, this is a hair puller, this, uh, this integrated bracelet. Um, it actually stereotyped me thinking that all bracelet watches uh, pulled your hair. It does not. There is a slight taper to it. I've worn it a couple times. You know, still has a lot of sentimental value. Again, a quartz citizen watch. Do not know the model. It's an interesting uh, bracelet style. You're able to, to slide the buckle up and down the bracelet and get a pretty good um, fit. This is on the chopping block. It is a larger lug-to-lug -lug watch than I now prefer you know, being 2017. It is still wearable for me. I really like the curved lugs. Even though it's long, it makes it wearable. So I like the curved lugs. I like the, you know, full, full, full normal dial, power reserve, sun loom, um, and the dome crystal is really nice. It came with a bracelet. I've mainly been wearing it on a brown leather strap. Uh, there is, it doesn't look the best because the distance between the case and the actual um, spring bar, there is a gap when you wear it on that leather. This was probably uh, 110 on Amazon. Next in the watch box, I've done a review on this. This is the uh, Gen 1 Seiko Monster. I'll put a link. Great watch. It, it's definitely grown on me. It was between this and the S XKX. I chose this one. I have not looked back. Um, drilled lugs. You know, it is a, a heavy diver watch, but for my six and three quarter inch wrist, it still is doable. It's, it's you know, it's somewhat tall. For a number of years, I've worn it on a Hirsch Liberty that you'll see in my other video. Recently put it on this um, Maritech uh, Zulu, where it's great. I think this is a keeper. Uh, continuing the dive theme, next up is my Gen 1 Orient Mako. Uh, Gen 1 being you got the uh, date pusher on this side, uh, the shitty shitty bezel it's so hard to turn this thing it's like near impossible horrible bezel um really got this because i wanted an orange watch um the size of it is perfect i've been wearing it for a long time on on this combination of uh, nato or uh, nylon pass-through this is usually my vacation travel watch i've taken this to australia Hawaii, trip to Chicago, uh, gone rafting uh, with it. it. Is screw down crown, of course, but just I love the design of the Gen One, the dial. I love the orange, um, but just the the Gen One bezel is just it's, it's horrible. It's, it's not functional, at least with this one I've gotten. I've thought about getting the. The, the rays without the, the date pusher, um, better bezel, um, but I'm just sticking with this one. It's, 
it, it's still fine. Again, Orient Orange Mako. Uh, continuing with divers, then we go into uh, Homage Watch. This is my Alpha Seamaster Homage. Uh, homage being it, it's not a uh, fake or replica, but it definitely does match the design of a uh, Bond wave dial 90s um, Seamaster, Omega Seamaster. Usually this is my winter watch. I wear it on a leather, this leather band. Uh, it wears great under a sleeve um, due to the kind of the thinner thinner case and sloping dome bezel versus Seiko Black Monster. There is no slope and it's just, you know, straight 90 degree angle. Uh, if I were to buy the, um, ever buy the actual Omega Seamaster, I'd probably go with the mid-sized case and maybe the blue with uh, ceramic bezel insert. Um, I do like the the wave bond dial, uh, but I'd probably I'd probably go with the the newer version. Continuing on the uh, homage theme, again, this is my other uh, homage from Alpha. This is a homage to the Rolex Explorer. Been able to experience, this is the 36 uh, millimeter, wears great, no date, screw down crown, check out my other video, currently I have a NATO. Uh, the the bracelet is not that great, but you you do get the you you do get to experience the design of a Rolex Explorer at eighty dollars. Um, you know, think if you really want wear this and figure out if you really want to invest four to fifty five hundred dollars for the the real one. Uh, this is my most popular video. This is my modded Vostok uh, Amphibia, Vostok Amphibia. I've modded, I've added a custom bezel from Dave Murphy and an insert from Dagus. Uh, taken off the crap bracelet and typically I wear it on on this style of NATO or nylon pass-through. Unidirect, uni bi-directional bezel, screw down crown, Check out my other video. This wears great. Um, if I were to buy a new one, I'd probably get the one with 20 inch lugs and not the 18 like this one has. Now we're probably getting to my, uh, my favorites. Had this one probably since uh, 2011. Wife bought this for me for my birthday break for a coffee sip. So this is a Seiko 5. Uh, great, great value. I've been a fanboy of these on the forum posts. I just love the affordability, the design, the size, the functionality you get with, with this Seiko 5 automatic movement see-through case back lets you to get experience the movement so uh, you get so much value with these Seiko 5s this is a blue dial I kind of got it to be a little it is a sport watch but I got it to be a little dressier um, applied markers I'll have to do a full review on this cons I don't like the um, the white second hand I think there's newer versions TGV Urban Drenchery reviewed. I'd probably get that one. It's black and it has a black uh, day date. I'm kind of that's a um, pet peeve of mine now that I've been uh, in the watch collections for a number of years. Is I like the matching uh, date date uh, dial to the actual uh, watch dial. 
But again, Seiko 5, so much value. If you want to start getting into automatic watches, these are very affordable and great value and quality. Been, you know, there's a lot of scratches on here. This thing's been beat up. Where in the office, where yard work, um, it, it'll take a hit and keep going. You know, these were designed to be affordable and last you decades. Another watch I've done a video on, this is my Archimedes Outdoor Protect. Um, there's the, the original version, the outdoor. This is the Protect version with the hardened steel scratch resistant. Currently I have it on this 18 millimeter pass through. Pretty soon I should be flipping it to the bracelet for the summer. You know, I really like this. These are um, kind of brushed everywhere. There is no uh, polished anywhere. So it's really good. German design, utilitarian, not flashy. Great size, great size for my wrist. You know, if you want to see more, watch the video I've done on this. This is my most expensive one so far. And last in the watch box is my most recent purchase. I've been stocking this watch probably for four months. This is the Seiko uh, Saab 035 versus the 033, which is the black dial. I ended up go going with this because, you know, if I got the black dial, it would trump this Seiko 5 that I don't want to give up. My wife gave it to me. This is such great value. So I ended up going with the, the cream color dial. Number of videos out there about this watch. Um, still kind of in the honeymoon period of this watch, getting used to it. Um, really enjoying the, the case design. Um, very wearable. I've really been trying to stick with in my latest purchases, which I haven't. I've only bought two watches in in the last three years. My Archimedes and and this one, the 035. I'm really kind of getting into the stride of what what I want. Uh, not buying homage watches, uh, Chinese ripoffs or anything like that, and really. Waiting for the size, knowing my wrist size, knowing what I want, and not buying, you know, huge chunky, chunky divers. Uh, even though I do like the design, it's just they wouldn't get worn for me. All right, and that is my watch box collection. Let me now move on to what's not in the watch box. So, what's not in the watch box? Um, what I'll likely be selling, and what's in the graveyard.